Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Last week I talked about the 3D lighting subject of specular reflections or specular highlights in the form of fong shading. In the last video I was using a directional light to get basic specular reflections working and today I'd like to continue that train of thought just a little bit farther. So for the purposes of, and I wish I could take credit for crafting this pun in advance, but uh, for the purposes of highlighting what we're going to be doing here, I have changed over the um, the light type in the specular reflections demo to be instead of a directional light, a point light. And I've also added just a big old a big old flat untextured sheet to the uh, to the demo scene. And if we look at it from a certain angle, if we imagine that the um, if we imagine that the point light is situated at somewhere around the world origin, uh, if we look at the sheet from a certain angle, we can see that we indeed have a um, a bit of a specular highlight being reflected uh, off the sheet at us. And the differences between doing this with a directional light and a, um, a point light aren't all that interesting. The only real difference is that, um, like, the light direction is the, uh, the direction between the, uh, the fragment being rendered and the, the light's position, instead of just being the light's direction. And, um, in practice, if you're going to do this with a, uh, a point light, you probably want to take into account the, uh, the distance attenuation the same way you would for the, uh, you know, the diffuse lighting color in the specular color, but I don't want that getting in the way of what I'm doing here, so I, I left it out. Anyway, the point is that we can see that the, uh, the specular bit on the sheet is a, uh, a smeared out circle, and that's fine, but sometimes in computer graphics you may want, um, specular highlights on flat surfaces like this to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more elongated towards the camera. Uh, something maybe a little bit more like this. I don't personally, when I'm playing video games, go looking around at the specular highlights to try and figure out which lighting model they're using, but if you think this looks a little bit better, you may wish to use, instead of uh, fong shading, which is what like the fancy nerd word for this is, uh, you may instead wish to make a slight modification to this lighting model and do what is instead known as blind fong shading. So this is only going to involve changing a couple of lines of code. Again, if you want to side by side, I can switch back and forth between fong shading over here and blin fong shading over here. Um, I've even seen in um, like some 3D um, demo scenes like uh, people passing a uniform to the shader so that they can turn uh, blin fong shading on or off for certain types of objects uh, with a uniform. So what changes do we have to make to make this work? So uh, right now our specular reflections are working by taking the uh, view direction towards the fragment and comparing that to the vector that you would get if you reflected the light's direction off of the, uh, the fragment's normal. And if that reflection is going directly into your eyeball, then you've got a, uh, a stronger specular intensity. If that reflection is going somewhere else, then you've got a weaker specular intensity. So we can accomplish this by um, taking, instead of the, uh, the view direction, the reflected light direction, and doing the dot product there, uh, we can instead take the vec3 half direction, which is going to be the basically the vector that's halfway between the light direction and the view direction, and using that instead and comparing that to uh, the world normal. And uh, that will, among other things, give us a more uh, elongated elliptical uh, specular highlight on flat surfaces instead of uh, just the boring little circles. So we can calculate the halfway direction by saying, um, and you'll commonly see it written down as negative light direction plus the view direction. Uh, you'll want to normalize that before proceeding. Instead of taking the specular intensity as the dot product, dot product between the view direction and the reflected direction, uh, we're no longer interested in the reflected direction, so we can instead say the specular intensity is going to be the dot product between the half direction and instead of the view direction, uh, I want this to be the uh, the world normal. So we're comparing these two dot products instead, and if I run this, uh, we're going to get, um, as you saw before, a somewhat more smeared out, elliptical, elongated um, reflection on the surface instead. And that's really all there is to blend fong shading. Um, if you're uh, really, really a fan of formatting your mathematics a certain way, um, this is a negative light direction plus view direction is, is equivalent to changing this around and saying view direction minus the light direction. 
Um, sometimes I'm... Sometimes I definitely think... And this looks really funny when I move around to me, uh, particularly because my monitor is, uh... Let's just say I have a really cheap monitor. And, uh, when I move around, sometimes, uh, we get, we get funny, like, LED ghosting effects. As far as I know, that doesn't appear, uh, when anyone else with a, uh, with a monitor that doesn't do that watches this, but it looks really funny to me. Anyway, um, I, I sometimes think that having a, like, subtraction instead of a negative term in front just looks more appealing visually. Uh, that could just be a me thing. Those two lines are equivalent. Anyway, that's all there really is to it. Uh, short video this week, but it is, uh, kind of hard to talk about fong shading without also throwing a bone to blend fong shading. You can use whichever of these lighting models you want. I don't really care. Uh, performance is about the same. So, that's it for me for today. My name is Michael. I like Wizards and Dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, links to, uh, this GitHub repository can be found down in the video description. I try to post about two game dev videos a week. One tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game. Currently a... 3D Zelda like wizard games, so if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Manta Ray, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Vitro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.